Thanks again at uh, Nomad PDU. Today we're specifically talking about inverters. Uh, with the number of people that are out camping at the moment and new to the, uh, I guess, to the camping uh, outdoors, they are very concerned about what they can do with an inverter, uh, what size inverter they should get and what they can run from it. The biggest mistake people make is they go get themselves an inverter and think when they've got a 240 volt little socket like this at the end of a pocket inverter, they'll think they can plug their plasma TV into it. Uh, with this one, you can't. But the fact is your plasma might draw, say, you know, five or 600 watt, uh, and you might put a plasma, plasma gun and they might draw two and a half thousand watt. Same as a very large power tool is going to draw a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand plus wattage, and that's running flat out. So just because you see a 240 volt plug like this, a lot of people in their four wheel drive see one of these little plugs in the back, looks like a power point in the back of your house. Um, a lot of the uh, four wheel drives you find have them, they're only 100 watt rated. 100 watt, to give you an idea, is enough to really run a laptop. So we have three inverters that we supply. Uh, 150 watt, which is really handy for the Nomad. You can use it for some things like your uh, 12 volt chargers, uh, which we use for the Robe. You would have seen us use these before. You can plug that in there and in the way we go, and that'll pull probably five or six amp when you're charging your 12 volt battery. So that's no problem. At six or so amp, that's only drawing around about 90 odd watt. So what you do is you typically look at appliances and look at what is the wattage that they draw. Good example is that I've got a... Uh, um, a jigsaw here and the jigsaw draws it says here it's 370 watt but it's a variable speed so i know that i can pull the trigger and it'll go up uh, current wise so we'll go into that very again shortly so a pocket inverter for example can run our nomad pdu ac dc charger and that's not a problem but would i leave it in for a long time no i wouldn't leave it in there for hours on end um, the reason is it's just quite simple it's just going to get hot it's not designed to be run for 24 hours but it can get you out of trouble if you need to. So the ACDC charger will draw 109 watt. What I've got plugged in here, or I'm going to plug in in a second, is I'm going to use a 600 watt inverter. So when you look at an inverter, if you're going to look at the products that you're using for it, and uh, you're going to look at it, it says a 600 watt inverter and it can boost to 1200. People say, okay, what I'll do is I'll work between half that. The same with the 300, you can have a spike at, uh, sorry, at the 300, you can have 600, 150 to 300. So all you do is look at the bottom range, don't exceed it. And the reason they have these, uh, you know, up to 600 as a burst is because it's a startup. So a fridge, for example, when it starts up, draws more amp than it cuts back down. And I've got a 100 litre freezer back here that runs off 12, 24 and also 240 volt. So if you put a 240 volt charge in, it's going to be uh, getting cooler better, quicker. Um, same with 24 down to 12. So I can plug that freezer in and I know it'll draw more current when it starts and it'll just back off. So the... 100 watt freezer that I've got back here. Now I know because I look at the back of the freezer and I know how many amp it draws. The same with the TV over here. I know that it draws, it says on the back, it tells you that's 48 watt. So 48 watt is fine to run even out of a pocket inverter because 48 watt into 150 is about a third of it. And you probably only want to run these at 70% uh, at the most. The same when you look at a 300 watt inverter and a 600 watt inverter. Do not take the upper range which says up to 1200 um, as a a startup and don't assume that's halfway between that it's absolutely not you'll end up getting yourself in trouble with inverters and you end up frying the inverter and that's the biggest problem with inverters is people think they simply can plug anything at all they want into it the fact is you can't the nomad pdu has a maximum of 20 amp output so that's one of the key things to remember it's a 20 amp output most common question we get from customers is can i plug a thousand watt inverter into my nomad now i'm always saying no and the reason I'm going to say no is because they'll try and use a 1,000 watt from a 1,000 watt inverter. That means you're using 100% of its capacity. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to get very hot and it will fail. Okay, and it will fail and fail and fail. You keep on doing it, you're putting it under too much stress. So, for example, this is a 600 watt inverter. If I plug it in and use it in my Nomad, 600 watt is well over 20 amp. But the fact is I'm not using any load yet. So I plugged it in. Sorry, I've got load on at the moment. So I plugged it in. Okay. and if I turn it on, obviously the inverter is going to use a little bit of current. So it's 0.21 on a 600 watt inverter. So yes, you can plug it in, but can you use it? Well, you can, but you can only use up to 20 amp. Now I'm going to do a couple of things to bring that amperage up. So for an example, what we've got here is, let's look at using a, uh, a soldering iron. So this is a 240 
uh, soldering iron. Now I know that it will probably draw about eight or nine amp maybe. So, and on that because it's a 40 watt, 50 watt uh, sol uh, soldering iron. So I know that's fine and that's a 600 watt. If I plug it in here, watch what happens up there. Okay, so it's getting hot now. I can use this as I, as I would out of a 240. And I could use that when I'm out camping, no problems. Now I could use this on the 300 watt inverter, no problems at all, because it's only drawing six amp. Now what I did want to show you is the, the value of these the little amp monitor you would have seen previously, which is these here. So this will actually tell you the amount of wattage that an accessory is drawing, as an example. So in this instance here, I've plugged that in, and I'm also going to pull that out right now because I don't want to get burnt, and I'm going to plug the TV in over there. Now that TV, you can plug in a like I've done before, um, my big 50 inch or 70 inch, and it will draw about 11 or 12 amps, a bit much. So as it kicks in now, the TV itself, that's a 240, it's only a small one, it's drawing four and a bit amp. Okay, we do have 600 watt in this one, but if it's draw 4.25 amp, uh, we know that's say 50 amp, we could use it in this, and we could use it in the pocket inverter. And just to show you that it will work with the pocket inverter, let's just pull it out, it'll make a beep again. <sighs> Let's turn them off and let's plug the TV into this small inverter. Okay, so we sell the 150s, 300, 600. Now it just comes down to the amperage of the Nomad. The Nomad can give you up to 20 amp. So let's plug the TV in there, it'll fire up in a second. Okay, it's firing up now, and then the TV should kick on after it gets to three or four amp. So that's 150 watt pocket inverter and you can run your TV off it again and that's running at about thirds capacity so yes you can use it the other thing I'm going to mention these are modified wave you will hear modified and you'll hear pure sign modified wave means it's a, it's a wave like so and then if you've got a pure sign it's more of a smooth curve and the pure sign inverters are much more expensive and they're typically a cleaner power and they're a power that you typically use in the house and that'd be pure sign off the AC these are modified waves, so they're more designed for some of your, I guess, uh, rougher power, so power tools and things like that, Dremels, um, soldering irons, and you can use, obviously, small TVs, etc. Uh, if you want to be a, a pure about it, you should be using a pure sign for anything that you, that's of value, uh, because it might shorten life by a few months here and there. But if you're out camping and you're using the cage, it's not going to hurt it. So, again, that's the 600 watt, the 150, and the 300. And from a price point, you're looking at around about 45 to 50, around about the 70 to 80 mark, and that's around 110, around that mark. So they're not very expensive, but they're very, very handy to have. And you can charge your Nomad PDU um, uh, and plug your ACDC charger into it. So the good thing about these little pop, um, battery analyzer is that it gets you to understand what wattage and amperage is, as in what you are drawing from the source. So if I was to use this, and I'm sorry about the mess here, but I'm just trying to do this and keep the time under wraps. So if I plug this uh, inverter over here, we'll take this and plug it into the other Nomad. So I'll plug this into this Nomad over here. And then I'm going to plug my AC-DC charger in. So let's pretend that that's just going into my 240 volt. I plug it in there. I turn it on. It's now drawing 1.44. It was just over 2. That's because of the, the, set, the, the startup spike. Okay, now I can plug this into the Nomad, and it'll charge it. It's drawing over here 11.2 amp. That's what's being drawn out of it. So if you're looking at an accessory, if I could plug this between here, how much is 11 amp? So let's plug this in. So this source is here. Same if it was a solar panel. Okay, it lights up. Let's plug it into the Nomad. And then you don't have to be a brain surgeon to work out how many amp into what. It pulls up here, tells me it's 11 and a half, sorry, it's telling me now that the charge rate going into the unit here is 7.55 amp. Even though coming out of the unit over there is 11, that's because you've got the inverter as well, because it's not just what the charge is doing. So, in going to the unit is 86.3 watt, that's actually physically going into the unit here. Um, that's 11 amp coming out, so you could say that's probably around about 100 uh, 100 watt of, of power being drawn from a 600 watt inverter. So can you run your 300 watt? Yes, you can and um, and you can run your pocket inverter But that will be drawing uh, when it's running flat out uh, And it can put in a bit more It can draw just over a hundred nine hundred and ten watt 
So you wouldn't run this for too long because it's only 150 watt rated. So the simple thing is look at your appliances and look at the draw and the, and the, and the, 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 the amperage at the back and also tell you the wattage that that accessory will draw. So I'm going to use this as a good example. This is the just a normal 240 um, jigsaw that you would use. Okay, it's a 370 watt. Now I know 370 watt is a lot more than 20 amp, but let's see what it does when I plug this in. And as long as I keep my eye on the Nomad and don't exceed 20 amp, so I don't want to exceed the 20 amp on the Nomad. So let's use the 600 again, and we'll plug that in. Take that out. Okay, we will plug this into the output because I'm going to run the inverter from my Nomad. Okay, so I'm running my inverter now from the Nomad. Okay, if I turn it on, it's going to draw about 0 0.2. There we go. Start it was about 0 0.6. So let's plug the jigsaw in. Now, if this is a jigsaw that was rated 1000 watt, this is rated 600. Don't say, well, that's 1000 and this can actually spike at 1200. It must be okay. No, it's not. 600 watt is the maximum consistent amount of current that it can provide. Uh, but I would never try, I would never use that. Um, all it does, it means if I'm not using that much of this, it's going to stay cool. And these you shouldn't be using at over 40, 45 degrees heat. Always make sure they're ventilated and don't put them near a fire and don't put them near a heat source. So let's plug that in and turn it on. Okay, again, see it spike up. So it's drawing power. Sorry, it's got power going to here. So as you see, when I press the trigger, it's a, it's a multi-speed. So when I pull the trigger here, watch what happens. So that there is a 240 volt uh, jigsaw, and I just ran that flat out, and that got to 18 amp on here. I could put my uh, my little analyzer and so in, into into the um, into here between the two, and that will tell me how much it's getting drawn out in in wattage. So let's do this again. Turn this off and plug. Okay, so now we're going from the source, which is this one now. Okay, because we're using this to supply power, whereas if you're running your um, solar panel to this and you put the analyzer in, the solar panel is the source. Okay, so this is now the source we're providing power uh, to the inverter. Like so. And it'll tell me what's coming out of it here, 11.36 uh, volt and 0.2 here. So if I turn this on again, let's have a look. Are we on? We're on here. And run it out, we'll tell you how many how many watts. So this is 370, so let's run it flat out. Okay. That got to 180 watt, got it to 17 amp. So it got to 180 watt. You might say, well, that's about 10, 10 times the amperage. It's not, it's actually around about 12 or 12.8. But it just gives you an idea that when you're playing with accessories, as long as you know what you're doing, and that's why the analyzer helps, as long as you look at the back of your accessories and you look at your Nomad and do not exceed 20 amp when you're drawing power, again, if you're going to plug your plasma TV in, my 60-inch uh, plasma, when I plug it in, it draws 11 amp. Um, when I plug the uh, Nomad charger in, I know that draws 100, 109 watts, uh, or here at about 11, 11, uh, 11 amp, and that's fine. Okay, so as long as you look at the wattage that your appliances are using. Um, some of the key issues you need that we come across, um, the wife might use a hairdryer, or the blokes might too, but a hairdryer might draw 1200, 1200 watt. Uh, a thousand watt Ninja uh, running flat out. Can you run it off the Nomad? No, you wouldn't because it's a thousand watt. You run a thousand watt into a 600 watt inverter, the customer will say to me, and this happens all the time, but I had a, I had a thousand watt inverter. Not about the inverter now. What can the Nomad provide? The Nomad can provide 20 amp, okay? It's 20 amp. What's the maximum wattage I'd be looking at? I'd say 250. And as you saw here, this ran at 170, 180 uh, watts. And I'm saying that the, the, the top the top end would be at two, yeah, about 230 to 250. Now, these will convert it to 220, 240. You've got to remember, these are modified wave. Um, you can Google modified and pure sign the difference because some things may not like modified wave. Pretty much everything runs from modified, but modified wave is a dirtier power. Again, it's the current that goes like this as opposed to smooth or a wave. And the typical wave type is when you, and they're very expensive, uh, probably two and a half times more as expensive as these. 
and but they you would typically use it on your expensive appliance. I wouldn't run a five thousand dollar plasma on a modified wave because it'll it'll probably take a few few months of life out of the TV, um, and it won't look as good. You'll see the actual you'll actually see a little bit of difference in the picture uh, running the modified wave. But if you're out and about, use it occasionally. It's not really a problem. I've used them all the time. Modified waves for pretty much everything. Um, I use the modified wave as you can see down here in my sea container. Uh, where I run the freezer. I will actually plug the freezer in just to show you. So this is a 100 litre freezer. It does run off 12 volts. Uh, what I will do is I will connect that to the inverter. Connect that to the inverter. Okay, let's try that again. With so many things running around here, I'm unplugging the wrong stuff and so on. Okay, let's plug in the 100 litre freezer, which I've got a oh, plug in down here. Going to plug that into uh, the inverter, and if you watch the draw coming out here, you'll see it. This is a freezer, by the way, and now it's just kicking on. It'll come up probably five or six, and that'll boot into about seven amp. So is that fine to run off a 600 watt inverter? Absolutely. So again, you've got to look at how much power you've got in the Nomad. You could run this quite happy on your freezer if you like, um, or I could run that off the 12 volt. It's still going to draw around the same amperage. Because I've got the voltage, it's going to actually get that colder quicker. Um, as long as I've got the solar panel pl uh, plugged into this and putting in more than 5 amp, it's not going to run dry. But it's, it's going to be, when it becomes uh, sundown, it's going to be fully charged. And then if it was running at 5 amp continually overnight, that still means I've used 60 amp power. And I'm still going to get through to the morning and it starts to cycle again. However, the thermostat will cut in once that's cold and then that'll go down to 0.21 because the inverter will stay on. This inverter won't get hot because this is a 600 watt inverter. Over there, you've got the 300s and the 150. So, you know, at 110 or so dollars on a 600 watt inverter, the key thing is you've got to remember you can't use the full wattage on this with this. If you're just running a, a, a big AGM 300 kilogram battery and you'll have plug, knock yourself out, you can run the whole 600 watt. Don't exceed it. Don't think you can run 1200 just for 20 minutes because it's halfway between the peak and the basic, the current or the running Continuous running current is what you really want to look at, and this is 600 watt, 300, 150. Don't exceed them, and that's a good rule. Uh, time and time and time again, we get it continually. People say the inverter burnt out. Really simply, what did you plug into it? Oh, I plugged the hairdryer in. Okay, can you look in the back of the hairdryer? What does it tell you? Oh, it's 1300 watt. Turn it flat out with the heat on. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to be pulling out 50 amp here. This will shut down. Okay, and you might have seen it shut down before is because I was messing around with it and the spike went out higher than 20 amp on this and that will shut down and protect itself. There's no point keep on doing that because you will damage uh, electronic equipment. And the key thing to remember is if you're new to this uh, camping uh, scene, if you go out there and damage all your electronic equipment in the bush, you're going to get yourself in a whole lot of trouble, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So there's a lot of capacity in the unit to be able to get yourself out of trouble, but understanding things like your accessories, how much watt and how many amp they draw, which is why these are great, especially if you don't know what you're doing. It gets you to, it teaches you all about your setup. When you set your off grid or you're setting your vehicle up, it allows you to understand your setup, and then you can quite happily say, "Well, my fridge in 24 hours only draws uh, on average about one and a half amp." Okay, well that's great, and so that means when it's peaking, it might only draw say seven amp. Can your inverter run it? Absolutely no problem. So the inverters are all fine as long as you read the instructions and you do not. Do not, do not exceed uh, the continuous running current, okay? Do not assume that it can run on the higher end. So, look, that's, that's inverters. So we went through, do not run them at a full capacity. The Nomen has a 20 amp or around about 220 to 250 watt maximum output, which is, say, 20 amp, okay? This is ballpark. But you can see on the screen before, you can run a, a multi-speed up. As long as you don't exceed 20, you'll be fine. Uh, you try to exceed that and say maybe it's okay for 10 minutes okay you're going to run into trouble um, this unit will tell us uh, because of the bms internally and the bluetooth analytic tool we use it can tell us if you've actually drawn too much current out of it uh, overloaded the system and so on you can reset an overload and a, a dead short which you can see on our on our uh, website but the fact is don't expose electrical products to currents and loads that you shouldn't and then expect them not to break because they will fail Okay, they might get away for a couple of times, but they will eventually fail. So, look, that's a quick look at inverters. If you do have questions on inverters, by all means, talk to us. Talk to our partners. Um, they'd be right across inverters and the capacities. Do not plug a 1,000-watt inverter in and plug your uh, your Ninja or your Bullet in that pulls 1,500-watt or your microwave that pulls 2,000. 
um, it's not going to cope with it and yes you will damage all electronic equipment that you use so look that's inverters I'm sure we're going to have some more questions on inverters by all means you can uh, send us an email or info at remulebiz.com.au or info at nomadpdu.com.au or look at our tutorials on our website and hopefully some of the questions you might have if you're new uh, to camping might get covered in there so uh, again thanks for your time we'll talk again soon